So in this video, I would like you to continue our discussion about counting. Uh, let's quickly remember our terminology. We discussed that when we are choosing elements from a set, we refer to that as sampling. Sampling from a set, it me means that choosing an element from a set. And uh, we usually draw samples at random from a set. Now, sampling could be with or without replacement. When I sample without replacement, it means that if I pick an element from the set, I don't put it back in the set. So it means that repetition is not allowed. Uh, and when I uh, sample with replacement, I pick uh, an element, but I put it back. So I, I, I might choose the, uh, the same element twice. So in summary, re with replacement means that repetition is allowed. Without replacement means that repetition is not allowed. Sampling uh, could be ordered or unordered. Uh, if it's uh, ordered, it means that ordering matters. So a, if, for example, my sample is A1, A2, A3, it's different from A2, A3, and A1. Okay, so last time we talked about ordered sampling with replacement. Now I want to talk about ordered sampling without replacement. What does, that, what does that mean? It means that I have a set. Let's say I have a set A. Let's say it has some number of elements. Let's say it has three elements. Uh, I want to choose a sample of size k. Let's say k equals 2. Uh, so it's ordered. It means that uh, like 1, 2 is different from one, 2, 1. But it's also without replacement. Without replacement it means that if I pick an element, I don't put it back in the set. So I cannot choose the same element twice. So what are the possibilities here? How many different ways I can have a sample of size 2 from a set with three elements in this fashion? Well, let's say I might pick element 1 and then element 2. Um, I might pick 1 and then 3. Uh, I might pick 2 and then 1, 2 uh, and then 3. And I might pick 3, and then 1, and then 3, and then 2. These are all possibilities. And as we see, there is 6 of them. What is the general formula for this scenario? If I have a set A with n elements, let's call it 1 through n, and I want to sample from that set k times, um, how many different possibilities do I have? Well, I can look at it this way. Let's say this is my first element, first element, first sample. This is my second one, and up to the last one. So this is the kth one. Now, how many possibilities do I have from the first uh, for the first uh, choice? Well, there are there are n elements in the set, so there is n possibilities. Now, when I pick one element, then I'm not going to be able to choose that element again. Right here, when I choose 1, I won't be able to choose it again. So is there 1, 2, or 1, 3? It cannot be 1, 1. So the second element, I have n minus 1 options. How about for the third element, I will have n minus 2 options because I cannot choose these two anymore. And finally, the last one, uh, if you do the math, it's going to be n minus k plus 1 options. So the total number of ways I can do this uh, is going to be by the multiplication principle, n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 up to n minus k plus 1. So this is the answer. Now we can rewrite this in different forms. For example, if you remember, what was the definition of an n, n factorial? n factorial is defined as n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 up to n minus, k, uh, sorry, n up to 1, you know, 2 times 1. Now, uh, these two seem uh, similar. There is just, there are some uh, uh, missing terms here. So, in fact, you can see that this formula that we had here, n times n minus 1 up to n minus k plus 1, can be written as n factorial divided by n minus k factorial. This is just a more compact way of writing this uh, product here. In fact, in terms of computation, um, the left-hand side is more efficient, right? But in terms of writing, you know, it's just more compact in writing it this way. And people usually give this a name. Uh, we show it by P and K. And we say that this is the number of K permutations. 
so this is the number of k permutations of n elements right of a set with n elements so it's just a name that we give to this kind of sampling sampling when we have order sampling without replacement so you don't need really to like memorize these formulas all you need to understand is that how we came up with this product here so this is a summary here uh, if I want to summarize the number of k permutations of indistinguishable objects is given by p and k which is n factorial divided by n minus k factorial again this is just n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 up to times n minus k plus 1 okay so as I said again instead of memorizing like these formulas it is important to understand how to solve problems uh, so let's look at an example Here's an example. If K, this is a very famous problem, it's called birthday paradox. So if K people are in a party, what is the probability that at least two of them have the same birthday? So the assumption here is that uh, there are N equals 365 days in a year, and all days are equally likely to be the birthday of a specific person. So, um, you know, it's a very, very simple model. So how do we solve this problem? Let A be the event that we are interested in. A is the event that at least two people have the same birthday, right? So, now the word at least, uh, we have discussed this before. Sometimes when we have at least, it is uh, sometimes easier to look at a complement. Like, r write down probability of A is 1 minus probability of A complement. What is a complement is the ev event that A does not happen. Uh, so it's the event that no two people have the same birthday. So in this case, it is in fact easier to find probability of A complement. Uh, the probability that A does not happen. Now, we can write probability of A complement is equal to the number of elements in A complement divided by the total number of in, uh, elements in the sample space. You know, this is an equally likely sample space. Uh, you know, all birthdays are equally likely. So we can write, uh, we can use our formula of, uh, you know, probability. And now, how do we find uh, these uh, two? Well, what is S? What is my sample space? All possibilities for birthdays. Now, how many people do I have? I have K people. Now, so let's f find how many ways, how many different ways I can have for their birthdays. Uh, again, it's easy to argue as before. Let's say this is the birthday of the first person, this is the birthday of the second person, and this is the birthday of the last per person, which is the you know, case person. Right? Uh, the first person, how many options do I have? Well, 365. So n possibilities for the first person. How, how about the second person? Well. The second person can have any uh, birthday, so again, n, 365, and the next person also n, and the last person also n. So this is, in fact, n to the power of k. This is the, the, the number of all possible uh, scenarios that they can have here. Now, how about the number of elements in a, a complement? Now, let's understand what a complement is. A complement is the event that no two people have the same birthday. Well, in that case, case again, I need to choose k, uh, you know, k birthdays, again, for the first person, second person, and the last person. However, in this case, the first person can have any of the 365 days, so n possibilities, but the second person can only have n minus 1 because it cannot have the, the same birthday as the first person. The third person can only have n minus two possibilities because it cannot have the same birthday as the first and the second person. And the, fine, the last person can only have n minus k plus one. In fact, this is the exact same problem that we saw a few minutes ago. So by the multiplication principle, uh, the number of ways doing that is n times n minus one times n minus two up to n minus k plus one 
which is in fact n factorial divided by n minus k factorial and our notation for that was p n k so uh, we are almost done we found the number of elements in a complement so probability of a complement is equal to uh, the number of elements in a complement divided by the total number of elements in the entire sample space um, the number of elements in a complement is p n k the number of elements in the entire sample space we found it is n to the k so probability of a is 1 minus probability of a complement so it's 1 minus prob p and k divided by n to the power of k okay so let's pick some specific numbers um, first of all n is always uh, you know in this uh, example 365 there are 365 days in a year that's that was the assumption and let's say k equals 23. There are 23 people in this party. We want to see what is the probability that at least two people have the same birthday. Now, if you want to guess, I don't know what your guess is, but most people guess that this probability of having two people with the same birthday, if you have only 23 people, is not that large. But in fact, if you calculate the probability, the probability becomes, I think it's going to be around 50.7 percent so it's a little bit higher than 50 percent uh, as I said it's usually surprising to most people uh, and it was surprising to me the first time I saw this problem in fact uh, so if you have 23 people in a party uh, the, there's a good chance that you can find two people with the same birthday the, pr the chance is 50 percent higher than 50 percent and in fact if you choose k equals i believe i don't remember exactly but i think if you choose k equals 57 then the probability of finding two people with the same birthday goes up to uh, more than 99 percent so let's write it as a percent again this is somewhat surprising like if it's 57 people you know you're almost sure to find two people with the same birthday and that's why this problem is sometimes called the, the birthday paradox because the result is somewhat uh, surprising. Uh, 